Hello viewers and welcome back to um, Dominions 4 with me, Pew Pew Choo Choo. We are playing as Chilton Hyde inside the multiplayer collaborative and it looks like two turns have happened. Apparently uh, I didn't catch up on the last turn. So oh well, um, there were a few battles going on this turn in an unexpected event. Looks like we found some nature gems which may come into uh, into use later on. But let's, uh, let's check out the map for now and let's check out what has happened so far. So, um, it looks like there was a battle over here at Golem Range. Let me pull up the names of the provinces over here again. So yeah, there was a battle there. I think the AI moved my troops uh, forward there by themselves. And it looks like the siege continues down here in the capital of Cytus, or Cytus. Alright, so um, let's actually view these battles. So let's see, there was a battle in Cytus with, uh, with four enemy combatants. No, sorry, three enemy combatants. So that's not very really much. Um, let's see if there was anything really interesting on the map. Some natives being conquered there. Uh, this battle seems kind of cool, so we'll check this out. This is, uh, Van... Nope. Is it this one? I saw the one with the cataphracts. Yes, it is this one. So let's see what, uh, our allies have been doing. Um, Van Helm in particular. Let's see what they have, uh, been really bringing to the fight. So over here... Uh, we have the enemy force coming with barbarians, heavy infantries, um, hopolites, and some sort of weird uh, black troop over here, spider warrior. Alright, so let's see. Um, the barbarians here are, are just fairly average units. They do a lot of attack damage though at uh, 21. Heavy infantries are kind of the same story. They have very, very low movements, but... Um, um, these heavy infantry units you can recruit really anywhere. Um, they're a neutral uh, faction. They're a neutral independent faction, so you can typically recruit these from pl places that you don't have capitals, right? Um, so yeah, he has a ton of he has a ton of those high damage and high armor people, and some hoplites which are um, which are good in formation. So that'll be actually pretty devastating, uh, provided that the AI establishes them in uh, in formations. And over here we have some spider warriors, which seem to be people with uh, with two attacks. So that's rather interesting, and high protection but low health, or rather average health. <clears throat> Speaking about this commander, let's check out this guy. So the Spider Lord over here. He can command a lot of troops. He can't move very fast, but he has quite a lot of armor. And for us, the uh, the faction that is Van Helm, let's see what we have. So we have some Provincial Defense, I presume, which are the mob of militiamen, fairly weak people. Heavy infantry, again, just a troop that you can recruit out of no... Oh, they appear to have some nets. I saw a net uh, getting thrown there, and yeah, nets are one of the cool things about this game, is that it's a one-time use- oh, it's the spider that does it. Yeah, web spit. So yeah, these uh, these web spit things, they, they effectively function as nets, and this will essentially pin down the enemy troop, making their defensive scale lower, so now these guys are at defensive level 3. Um, one of these guys, the ones that aren't in nets, are- should be higher than defense skill 8, but then again, this guy has two uh, wounds, right? So yeah, it's kind of neat. Alright, let's see. What are we going to do here? Have a nice little flanking attack with the cavalry. Let's see if uh, these guys are actually able to pick off the enemy commander. So these guys, the cataphracts, uh, they are the people that we're more or less interested in. So they have, uh, well, they're experienced troops, so they get better morale and attack skill and stuff and such like that. They seem to be more or less defensive units, and they're fairly average on health and strength, which is average for the, uh, the human races inside this game. Um, but high on protection, which makes sense. The weapons are, are average. Oh, what has happened here? Huh, that's rather odd. Not sure if you guys noticed, but um, yeah, the morale broke, but one of the interesting things is that the, th the spider thing has actually thrown off the commander, or uh, or maybe it's just a bug that doesn't uh, generate it anymore, or something like that. That's rather odd. What do we have here? Baldur, the, the hearse. So this is probably one of their commander, one of our commanders. And that is the end of that battle. So let's see what we can do. Um, now, rather, let's check out some of the fights that we were in. So in Golem Range, we fought a big battle. So let's uh, let's take a look at that and let's see what has uh, happened in that. 
Um, I'm going to put it on half speed so that we can take a look at the lines. So, um, you know, I wasn't sure about this at the beginning. I didn't know if the AI automatically, um, rather, if the AI assembled their lines or not, but it looks like they do. Uh, they are starting to do that. What do we have here? So, yeah, we have our standard army. Oh, crap. Uh, one of the things that I meant to do was that I wanted to equip our Scratty over here with some more water gems and stuff like that. <coughs> mm. Excuse me. Um, yeah, but it doesn't look like we have any more of those water gems. So we are able to cast that rain spell where something's going on. So um, that'll give the Abyssians over here a little bit of an advantage. But we, um, but overall, we should be good, uh, provided that we're able to pick off his early line here. Um just before anything else happens. So as you can see, the Abyssians, they generate this heat aurora around them and they actually set the field on fire. Um, we have some provincial defense, I presume, with the uh, archers and all. And our guys are fairly tough, so what I want to do here is that I just really want to uh, smack some other troops down. Yeah, these Abyssian infantries, they'll either have axes or these morning stars uh, things. Apparently these guys are holy warriors, so I want these are, yeah, they're all not warriors, I suppose. So this is their vanguard from the looks of it. Very heat-resistant troops. These guys are also bazookers, and again, uh, these these guys, these are these are their uh, elite units, so they're a little stronger than usual. Um, but then again, our forces are actually made out of our elite Grimmer Herding forces, too. Um, so this will be an even fight, hot versus cold, I guess. They have, they these guys have decent protection, de decent hit points. While on the other hand, we have uh, more protection. So um, we kind of have a we, we have a thing going on like that. Over here, we have some spine devils, which are fairly high health troops, high magic resistance, and it looks like they have poison uh, weapons. All right, time to speed this up. Yeah, so once we get our attack blows, that should clear off um, a few of their troops automatically. But the problem with uh, our guys is uh, they can have three troops to where we have only one, which is a big, big, big problem. And what do they have down here? Here they have some ordinary infantry, which have high protection. And because we've uh, already hit these guys a few times, can't see their health. So these are human breads. I want some of their regular infantries if I can find one. No. Oh, that's good. It would seem that we have, um, have we? Looks like we shot our, uh, we, we shot their beast trainer, which is a commander, uh, with one of our uh, spells, an entanglement spell, I believe, a slime spell. So yeah, it does the same purpose. Ah, no, it's expired now. Oh, and their lines have broken, which is nice. Let's see if we can, uh we can swing over this uh, bottom f uh, group of troops forward and really get rid of their Abyssian infantrymen. Yeah, one of the things that we should note about this battle is that these Abyssians have high costing, costing units just like us. So provided that we can just keep on smacking them down, it'll take them a long, long time to recuperate these losses. Now let's see, what can we do about this? Yeah, they are, they actually have quite a lot of archers here. They actually have a mix of archers too. They have some of these uh, Lion Tribe Archer guys. So short bows, range of 20, damage of 9, precision of 11. Short bows again for these archers. And what about for these villains? These villains seem to be able to shoot better. We're actually, uh, it's about the same. Just general archer troops, I suppose. Alright, so I presume we've already picked off the beast uh, trainer commander. Let's see if we can pick off... Oh, there we go. There goes the priest. Um, so yeah, their priests typically will serve the same purpose as ours, right? They're really just there to do one purpose. Um, to bless troops and to do the sermon of courage to heal them up. Speaking of blessing, we don't seem to be doing all too much of that. So we we'll, uh, we might want to double up on priests later on. Um, simply because, yeah... Oh, our guys are on fire kind of sucks. Oh, fire got rid of one of them. So yeah, there's a big battle right there. If we take a look at the losses, yeah, the beast trainer died, the salamander died, and typically speaking, I mean, you don't see any of these neutral commanders where one of these, uh, like, natural commanders, as I like to put them. Um, so yeah, it's really odd, but we managed to pick off a ton of their troops. A lot of their Abyssian infantry went bye-bye, so these guys are, yeah, fairly costly at 20 uh, to 26. And they have decent 
protection, decent hit points, very, very uh, more moderate damage, I suppose. Um, so that's that. Yeah, we, we took out all of their heavy infantry, or almost all of their heavy infantry. Um, and on. So that's, I uh, guess that is that. And what did we take for losses? We took uh, we took five Gurma Herdings and four Jotan Huskarls. So I mean, overall, I think that that trade-off was in our favor, but nonetheless, um, that is still a little expensive. All right, so now let's get our troops formed up and let's get them doing some other stuff. So what I think I'll do is that I'll merge our troops like that, and I'll get Volsung and uh, Sigmund to head back to base. Now let's see, what can we do about these movements? Can I get them to go into this this province? Yeah, there we go. So I'll get them to move back. I need Volsung to be um, to be restocked on gems, and the only way that he is going to do that is if he restocks uh, on gems in a uh, laboratory, and the only one that we have currently is back at base, so we're going to have to get that done. Get this guy to do research, this guy to do research, these people should do research too. And he, apparently we've hired some Pegasus Riders and Victor the Villain, which are, I presume, mercenaries. Yes, the AI did that for us. Thank you very much, AI. I will send these guys across the Frozen River to attack these, uh, these Jaguar warrior people over here. Um, so yeah, we'll do that. These guys should, should move. There we go. And it looks like we've summoned a Bane, and this is one thing that I wanted to do. Uh, so, thank you, AI. We summoned a Bane, and we can get this Bane to do some stuff now. Oh, yes, and we also have this Gnome person, which I'll keep to uh, do some researching. Um, what else should we do? We have a lot of Death Gems, we need, uh, and we also have a lot of Nature Gems. Now, I do recall sending out one person to do some Sight Searching. Yeah, there they are. Um, so with them, I'll get them to go um, into the woods over here to do some site searching. And for research, we are starting to level up evocation to the point in which we should be able to cast Freezing Mist in a little bit. And to cast this Freezing, freezing Mist spell, uh, we're going to have to find somebody with level 1 air and level, uh, level, yeah, level 3 water mage. And what I think I'll do here is uh, we can gain level 3 water easily. Um, it'll only take a few dice rolls by generating those Scrotty people. Uh, but they are a little slow to recruit. Now, um, as we do that, let's see. Corgo over here. Corgo, what should you do? I am going to have you ferry some of these units have a giant line and then a line of undead troops so we'll do this and I'll get him to ferry these troops towards the front and what we plan on doing here in the next little while is that I want to close off these mountain passes and the only way we do that is by relinquishing their uh, their mountain their mountain the mountainous connections over here <clears throat> and the reason we want to do that is that um, once we secure these mountain ranges and then once we get our dominion over here these uh, orange lines will not be able to be used and what that kind of said will keep uh, all of this at bay all of the stuff that's been pouring down into Caleb Caleb's area uh, we can try to contain that hmm so I think that's pretty much the end of this turn. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys later on. I'll probably send a message to Das. I'll, uh, I'll see if he's able to forge anything um, you, that is able to utilize uh, air, air magic. In exchange, I'll trade him some of our, uh, some of our earth gems for that. So I'll see you guys uh, next turn where we do some other stuff.